Okay, awesome. Recording is in progress. Welcome, everybody. A big welcome to everyone who's joining this session live today and everyone who's listening to this recording or watching the broadcast on Facebook. So before we get going, and I learned this from my um, from a great book I've been reading, actually, which I would recommend, um, The Art of Gathering. It said, don't start a meeting or a gathering with all the housekeeping, like do something fun. Um, and I'm limited with time here, but I did think I would, hopefully you can all see my screen as well, because I should be sharing my screen. Little fun cartoon there, which kind of sums up the tool we're going to be doing today. It's one of my favorite cartoonists, um, theawkwardyeti.com. So there's just a little bit of fun to get us going. Um, so I'm Emma Louise LC from the coaching tools company, as I hope most of you know, when I first came across life coaching in 2003, I had no idea that I would soon live halfway around the world or that I would move to a small cottage on five acres, or that I would run an online business from home. That really is the power of coaching. The coaching tools company has been alive now for uh, well over 12 years. And I've recently launched my latest passion fiercekindness.com. I've been in beautiful Canada for 18 years this year, and that's where I am today. And I'm truly grateful for this life that I live. Um, with me today is Michaela Phillips, who works with me at the Coaching Tools Company. And she's helping with everything from admin, she'll be admitting people from the waiting room, and she'll also be managing the chat and responding to any questions that you may have um, on a technical front as far as she is able. So this is our first ever monthly tools clinic which means I really do want to hear what is working and what isn't for you. So there will be a very quick, it's not even a survey at the end, it's two radar button questions and then um, a question with your comments for things you'd like to see improved or things that you loved. So that would be great if you could stay and look for that link at the end of the session. And that's it. So this is an experiential clinic. Um, so I'll be asking you guys to take part. There will be breakout rooms um, and I'm aiming for 45 minutes maximum, because I think that was some of the feedback I got when I was setting this up, was you said, don't make this a long thing, let's make this short and sweet. So it'll start with a demo of the What Makes My Heart Sing tool, and that'll take about well, 25 minutes or so, and then 15 minutes of questions about the tool or about any tools that you might be interested in, any tools or resources or questions you might have there. And lastly, oh, I went on a slide there. Um, lastly, um, I'm assuming you're all Zoom veterans by now, but if not, if you want to access the chat box on Zoom, then just move your mouse or um, tap your smartphone screen and the chat should come up or an, a black bar with the option to head into the chat should come up. And that is where I'd like you to type your questions and um, suggestions um, yeah, and comments. Okay. Any questions before I get started? Okay. Oh, greetings from frosty Winnipeg. Yeah, we're just starting spring here. The sun's out today. So, and the snowdrops are out. So, okay. So, um, oh, and this is where I just have to follow. This is my first one. So please bear with me for a minute here. Um, we are going to go to here. Okay. So, the What Makes My Heart Sing tool is, uh, it's one of my absolute favorite coaching exercises. It's an incredible tool for awakening, finding joy, finding that energy from within, and helping people with balance and self-care. It's really great to use in workshops and webinars, as we'll see in a minute. And also, I've given it as homework numerous times, and it always is a, is a very popular tool. So today, what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating how you could use this tool in a workshop, webinar, or group coaching format. And I haven't done it with 100 people like this before, so this is new for me as well. I'd like to make sure you all have a pen and paper ready, like I do. Um, you don't need the tool itself to participate. It's a super simple tool. Um, and I guess we'll get started. So before we start... Um, delving into the exercise, I'm just wondering if you could type into the chat what you think I mean when I say what makes your heart sing? What do you think the heart sing means? 
And I could actually roll on a slide here while you're just doing that. Feeling happy, joy, energizing, passion, feeling energized and inspired, joy. Joy comes up a lot, makes me happy, joy and happiness, light up, joyful, authentic. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Yes, oh, I love that, when you feel glorious and lose track of time. Awesome, so there's some amazing suggestions in there. Life purpose obviously makes you feel joy. And peace, inner peace. <laughs> Sylvia, what I'd rather be doing than working. So you're all absolutely right. It's about feeling light, happy, joyful, carefree. And that often comes when we're deeply connected to ourselves. So before I'm uh, putting you all into your breakout rooms, um, a few pointers. And I think I've animated this slide for us here. Oh, nope, that moves me down the screen there. Here we go. That's the question. What makes you feel happy, light, carefree, or joyful? So some examples just to help you out here. Um, could be something like watching dogs or children play, hiking a mountain, cooking your favorite meal, fresh sheets on the bed. I love bare feet in the grass. And actually, I love it when I drive my husband bar me. But when I'm on the walk, I love to stop and smell the flowers, um, literally. <laughs> So whatever it is, though, the things that make your heart sing will be unique to you. There are no wrong answers. So um, also, if you get stuck, um, think back to your childhood. That's a good pointer, a good place to go. Also, using your five senses, like thinking about what makes your heart sing, thinking about smells, um, things you love to touch. Someone said once, you know, wearing her favorite cashmere jumper, um, sweater those who are not English. And lastly, simple is good. The simpler, the better. All right. So I think it is time to put you into your breakout rooms. Um, at the end of the breakout room session, I'm hoping to ask a few of you to report back on um, things that came up, your ideas from, from your breakout room groups. So I'm going to be putting you into groups of about three or four. And um, yeah, so I, will, I won't have time to ask everyone. We've only got a limited time. So I'll be asking maybe three or four of you. So I'll be randomly sort of picking people to report back. So when you go into your breakout room, if you can decide the one person who'll perhaps be making notes and is willing to report back to the overall group. Okay, so this is what I'd like you to do first in your breakout rooms. Um, share your name, the country you live in, and what kind of coach you are in five words or less. So this is not a time for your elevator speech. This is, I'm a life coach, I'm a retirement coach, I'm an executive coach or leadership coach. So your name, the country you live in, and what kind of coach you are. And I'm gonna give you a minute or so to do little introductions, and then you'll move on to brainstorming together and sharing your ideas for what makes your heart sing. Okay, so let's put you into breakout rooms. Okay, so. How was that? Um, I would love for some of you to unmute yourselves and um, yeah, just how was that for you? Uh, may I speak about my group? Um, yeah, or we could go straight into that. Yes, tell me about your group, Hanfi. Uh, I am Hanafi from Egypt and uh, I had Tessa from the States, United States and Sally from South Africa. And uh, the three of us agreed together that although we are from three uh, different geographical areas in the, in the globe, we agreed that uh, uh, nature and the landscape uh, here in Egypt and in South Africa, the river, and uh, again, the cozy uh, springtime in the States uh, is a major... Uh, uh, source of happiness for us. Uh, for uh, Tessa, she's, she likes uh, animals. She has a dog. Okay, and I'm going to start is, typing some of these. Okay. So, uh, again, it's nature, uh, water, the skies, the landscape, greenery, and animals, and family, cozy life. Okay, I like it. All right. Thank you, Hanfi. So this is one thing I'm doing. I'm using this annotation here. So that's a great list. 
Thank you so much, Hanfi. So who wants to share for, who else wants to share for their group? And I'm going to start. I'll share, and... I'll share for our group. Okay, um, awesome, Julie, thank you. Um, one of the things that a couple of us talked about was singing or songs. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that other people are, are, makes their hearts sing, but it makes ours. Um, <laughs> um, connecting people, um, uh, you know, finding those connections. Um, a baby laugh, Muppets. Puppets. Um, the Muppets. Oh, the Muppets. The Muppets. <laughs> like the Muppets. Um, uh, the joy of a dog running down a trail. Mm-hmm. Um, sunshine on a cloudy day, which is what got us talking about songs, because we had to sing about that. Um, <laughs> uh, things, like physical activities like yoga and hiking. Okay. Well, that's a great list. That is a really great list. Okay. Thank you, Julie. So I'm going to do another list here. Who else wants to share? I'm going to pick a different color here. Share. Our group um, was either quality time with adult children or grandchildren or tr- just seeing the transformation in others. Um, and also one lady talked about her volunteer work with rescue animals. Uh huh. And then we kind of all wrapped back around that nature personally, you know, outside of our professional work, that nature is, is a big, um, we find a lot of joy and comfort in that. Okay. Well, that's a great list. Thank you. That was Janice, right? Thank you. And I think maybe we'll do one more group here. Who else wants to give us? Uh, I, I, I will. It's, it's Olivia here. Hi, Olivia. Hello. Uh, so I'm, I'm calling from Ireland. And uh, we had um, Fatia, who, uh, like myself, enjoys good conversation. And um, uh, Fatia likes talking about how people behave. Um, And we had uh, Erica, who enjoys being out in nature. She enjoys photography. She very much enjoys writing a novel currently. Uh And and I myself love uh, walking on the beach. Uh Awesome. That is a really great list. We have some really good things here. Actually, I'd love to do one more quickly. Do we have one more... um one more group that's willing to put someone up and, and tell us what makes your heart sing. Good morning. My name is America. Oh, 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 well. oh I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Go, go, on, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to add, thank you. Thank you. Very gracious. Um, I was just going to add um, that uh, um, what was mentioned was uh, a large body of water um, speaking with adult children, you know, uh, interacting with adult children, dancing, journaling, Ah, yeah. And the most popular one was laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the laundry or just once it's done? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say laundry and leave it at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good list to get started. I'm sorry about that, Maria. We didn't get to hear from you, but uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm there. I'm going to just save this so that we have this saved. Um, and then before we move on, I have to clear it. Otherwise, it shows up on my next slide. I have learned this much. Um, okay, so, f- oh, no, oh, darn it. I should have left those up there for my next question. Um, so, from what you can remember that was on the whiteboard, uh, what do you notice? So, this is a question to everyone, and perhaps you can type your answers in the chat. What did you notice about all of those ideas? And I'm very sorry that I, I'll see if I can recover that image there, but. Um, Control Z, you might get him back. Control yeah, Z. Yeah, I can get it from the downloads. It's just, I um, just took a print screen. If I can. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, hopefully we can all, uh, I'm seeing people are typing in the chat now. Thank you. Um, we've got a common theme of nature, travel, lots of nature, animals, Unique to each person, but also similarities. Things that are simple, a water connection, um, happiness connections, outside, family and friends, people connections, nature and sunsets. Oh, that's a lovely one, unborn baby kicking. Um, Non-materialistic sense, uh, talking to adult kids did come up quite a bit. Interestingly, not young children. (laughs) Fuzzy things, 
animals connecting. Um, I think there was a creativity theme there with and volunteering. I saw um, peaceful times. Yeah, no, no matter where we were, nature matters. Laundry journaling. Yes, journaling is a very powerful tool. So I'm wondering, there are some common themes there. Um, everything mentioned was serene. Thank you, Ag Agatha. Um, there are definitely some common themes. I'm wondering what else you notice. What do you think ties all of those together? When we look at, and, we, and I've had a few pointers. Someone said non-materialistic. Uh, it's all about reactions of feelings. I mean, you react to objects, you react to nature. Uh, that's where you, uh, you get your happiness. So being, yes. So it comes from feeling, it comes from being, it comes from connection. And I'm very sorry that I deleted the screen because I think it might have made it easier. Um, usually I will put people into um, rooms to have another discussion of this. So this is an option when you're running this yourself as a group. Um, you can put people back into groups and give them an opportunity to, to go deeper with this. Um, but the other thing I noticed about all those on the board is that those things that you came up with are mostly free. And if they're not free, then they're cheap. They're not expensive things. So they're free, cheap, and they're also all really easy to do. So that is, if I move on to my next slide now, the big question. If the things that make our hearts sing are cheap, free, or easy to do, why is it that we don't make more time for these things in our lives? And that is a very powerful, if people, so when I'm running this in a group, often someone will come up with the, and they notice that it's free or easy to do. And I managed to clear the whiteboard, which did not help there. Um, and so then I put up this big question. And then sometimes I will put people into groups again to discuss why is it that we don't do these things more? And perhaps you have some ideas, you can stick them in the chat quickly. Why do you think that we don't do these things more if what truly makes our heart sing is that easy, that simple, and it's free. Yeah, so I think, I think as coaches, a lot of us will be doing these, but yes, we don't schedule our to-do list. There's inertia, there's a pressure to provide, time constraints. People lose connection with themselves. I think that's very true. And this urge to be productive all the time, that's very true, Tira. So I think as coaches, I think we probably do these things a lot more than other people. But if you think about your audience and the clients that you're working with, a lot of them, they get so caught up in life and they don't realize that these things that truly make our heart sing are right there on your doorstep. You can just head out of the door and spend some time in nature. Yeah. So I think people think we're wasting time. Thank you, Julie. And we forget to live mindfully. Okay. So... The next slide is, I would like you all just to spend a couple minutes, a minute and a half, making your own list. I know you've probably got a list started already, but sometimes when we have that group share, there are some new ideas or some things you haven't thought of or some things you haven't done for a while. So I'd like you all just to spend a minute just adding to your own list from what you've learned from others, what you've seen from others, and any new ideas that you have. Oh, and Kay was asking, is this professional or personal? So this is for you, to give you an experience of this tool. So for you personally. Oh, 
Okay. I noticed with our, we're, <laughs> so what Olivia's just said, one of the things that stops her is we should be earning. There's a feeling of guilt. Okay. So um, I would encourage you to make your own list. And as you think of extra things to add things to it, this morning I thought of one new one because you all kept talking about nature and these bodies of water. I love it when I go out in the springtime and you start hearing a new bird singing. There's a new bird song that I haven't heard for a while. It's, it's really a harbinger of spring and I love listening to bird song that makes my heart sing. So to wrap up this exercise, um, I would normally, we're running a little bit late on time, I would normally get some of you to share a few more of your heartsing items or maybe maybe um, an item that surprised you or that you hadn't thought of before. So if you're running this in a group, you put them in the groups, they get to discuss, you get them to report back to the group. Then you give them a little bit more reflection time to go away and think about what's unique to them, what new ideas they have. And then it's wonderful to get people to share um, the new ideas or the, the wonderful new idea that's come up for them that they're excited to try. But I'm going to move on to wrap up um, this exercise and ask you all to identify one action that you will complete today or at least within the next week to bring more of these heart sing moments into your life. So I want something that you can easily achieve and commit to, not something that's going to involve a lot of planning, but something you can do in today or in the next week. And then I'd love for a few of you or everyone to share that in the chat. So what is the one thing you're going to do to bring more of those heartsing moments into your life? Agatha would love to hug a birch tree when she walks. More sleep. Taking a belly dance class, that sounds fun. More walks. <laughs> You've got your son visiting, so that sounds like that's going to bring that right home. Going on a hike. Oh, more beach time, reading a great, oh, I love reading. Hiking. Put two things from my list in my calendar so I plan to do them. That's great, Jennifer. Thank you. Oh, we're getting more random acts of kindness day. Good point. Yes. So doing a random acts of kindness, that certainly makes my heart sing. Trying a new class at the gym. Oh, we've got some amazing answers here. So these are all going to be downloaded in the chat. So you'll all get to see them again and, and add to your list. Okay. So this tool is amazing for homework. Um, but I wonder thinking caps, I wonder who you could see yourself using this tool with in your business, in your coaching business. Who could you see yourself using this tool with? And not necessarily a specific person, although that could be that, but who, what type of person? Someone who's stuck. I think, yeah, youth love this exercise. I've done this with youth and they do. Just starting a new group. Yep, people struggling with well-being and balance a person who is down about job loss, so they still have something to be enthused about life, someone who's grieving, clients who are undecided or stuck, people looking for a new career, work-life balance. We've got some great ideas here. Awesome. Okay. And then the last question is, what? I mean, I think this is kind of, you've been answering this as we go, actually. What other uses can you see for this tool? So we've already got clients um, struggling with confidence, someone struggling with the new normal with COVID. I've actually used this to drive out values with people. Um, you, you, it really is helpful to get some pointers for values and then you just coach them and go a little bit deeper. Okay, so, um, oh, grounding people, yes. I am aware that we have gone a little bit over what I intended, and um, I would love to have your questions. So let's go. Do you have questions? First of all, I guess, do you have questions about this tool? Okay, I'm seeing quite a few shaking heads now, so that's great. Um, oh, yes, we can share a link to the tool on the chat. I think Mikel is going to do that. So thank you, Vicky. Yes, this, it's a very simple tool. It's why I love it so much. It's simple and it's powerful. Um, I actually 
I don't know if I should say, I won't say who I did this to. I did this tool with someone who was feeling down during COVID and they said it completely changed how they felt. I think it put them back in control, realizing that they had agency to do something despite COVID. So it's, been, it's a great tool to do during COVID as well. Okay, so what questions do we have? And you can ask me anything at all about the tool, about resources, about how to use the tool in a group. It can be as specific as you like. So what do you think about using this as an exploratory call to see, to invite with prospective clients? Um, I think you could use this tool with prospective clients. I think the risk is, I think, unless your prospective client has said, they're feeling down, they're feeling stuck, unless you want to sort of demonstrate how coaching is. I, for me, an exploratory call is always about the client. It's always about helping them figure out what it is they want from coaching. It could be good to give them a little mini experience, but there's quite a lot to it. So I think if you have a client with a specific purpose where you think, with a specific goal and you think, what makes my heart sing is really going to help them, then um, great, then use it in an exploratory call, but only if it's solving a problem you think that client has. Um, otherwise, I think the exploratory call should really be about getting to know the client and what their issues are and, and helping them figure stuff out. So yes, it's a very inspiring tool, Kitty. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Or I should say, what other questions do we have? How it would work for drawing out values. Okay, so some of the, oh, I've gone on to the um, next slide here. Um, some of the items that came up on the screen were things like nature or bodies of water. So one of, you could ask, so what is it you love about being oh, near okay. a, body, a body of water? Are they over the shelf? Oh, someone has unmuted themselves. Michaela, I don't know if you can see who's unmuted themselves and have a look at that. So if someone, I'm just going to see if I can mute everybody for a second here. Ah, there we go. Awesome. So if someone has said bodies of water, you could say, what is it you love about being by a body of water? And they could say, well, it's peaceful and it's calm and whatever it is they say. And then perhaps in a peace, perhaps calm is a, or it makes me happy. Um, so, you drill down onto some of the items on their list, like connecting with adult children. Well, what's so important to you about connecting with adult children? Um, love, connection, and there are values right there. So you look at the items that they come up with and just what's important about that and keep asking what's important about that until you get to a value. Okay, thank you. What other questions? We were saying so surprised. Does that evoke? Ah, yes, I love that question. What surprised you about the list? Yeah. Okay, other questions. And it doesn't have to be about this tool. It could be anything at all, or about how to use it in groups or webinars. How would you use it to ground? Hmm. I think one of the things I didn't do and I could have done when I look back is just asking people to, you know, shake, shake things out a bit, take a deep breath and even connect to the five senses. Um, I think this was a tool I did. I was doing a trauma, a workshop about trauma and um, about trauma and counseling. And one of the things they said was to use the five senses to really connect to ourselves but you also get those little ideas of things that make your heart sing from the five senses. So what can you smell right now? Okay. And then what smells really make your heart sing like a coffee, like the, the smell of roasted coffee, um, the smell of baking bread. I mean, those smells make my heart sing. And then we can be, well, what, what are you seeing right now? And as you look out, and this won't be true for everyone if you don't have a great view out of your window, but you know, what do you see even around your office? And that's another great grounding um, thing is to see what you see. And then what makes your heart sing? So I have, for example, this little um, thing here. I was having some issues with um, um, endometriosis and a friend of mine who's an artist painted me this. And so whenever I look at that painting, it reminds me of her and a difficult time and how far I've come. Um, and it, it's very grounding just looking 
And, and then what makes your heart sing when you use the sight, when you use the smell, what can you hear? So that could be, um, oh, talked about good smells in our breakout. How long would you do the workshop for? I'm just zooming back up the questions now. Um, well, that took us 30 minutes with some difficulty with the breakout rooms. And um, so I think 45 minutes would be good to go through the tool. You could even then allow people to go a little bit deeper with that question around if you think, if, if you see how easy these things are to do and free, you can, why aren't we doing them more and reporting back? But an hour is a nice long time to do a little bit of intro, a little bit of wrap up for you, maybe making your coaching offer at the end if you'd like to work with me um, and giving your participants plenty of time to, people love going into those breakout rooms and discussing. So 45 minutes, you could definitely do it in. An hour would be perfect if you're doing it as a, as a, as a whole, as something, maybe as a marketing opportunity, or even just to get, well, to get more clients. Um, okay, let's see, at the beginning. Um, how do you address the pushback of I don't have time? Um, watching a sunset, let's see, let's have a think about some of those ideas. Watching a dog race down the park, I mean, around a path in front of you, I mean, it doesn't, a lot of those things don't take any time. So I wonder if someone could chat. I wonder if any of you have some ideas about how you would address that pushback of I don't have time. Because um, I'm thinking about a lot of those things didn't really take a lot of time. Like looking out of the window, five minutes. Is five minutes a long time to go out and sit, and sit on the grass and feel bare feet, feel the wind on your skin? So how would you guys address... Um, I don't have time. Ask them where they're spending their time at the moment to become aware of how and where they give time and energy. Ha-ha, <laughs> can you afford not to spend time on what you love? Change of perspective. Yes, I like that, Vivian. How can you incorporate some of these into what, what you're already doing? One of the things I love to do um, when I'm helping people <coughs> set actions is asking them how they can get to a place of a multiple win. And I always give the example of a client I had who um, wanted to get fit. So what they started doing was riding their bicycle to work every day. And it, part of their route, they took a slightly different route to work and they went through a park. So what they ended up was saving money on the bus, not polluting the environment by um, taking their car. They got to cycle through a park and they got to get fit and they, it, they said they felt so energized when they got into work. So we had this multiple win where they had an action and they had many things that were um, great about doing that action. So if someone says they don't have time for it, I think finding a way to incorporate it into something they're already doing is great. Okay, so this has been wonderful today. Um, and it's thank you time. A huge thank you to everyone who attended today and generously shared of themselves and with each other. So thank you and for your great questions. Um, a huge thank you to Michaela for her support today. Thank you, Michaela. And a link to the recording will be sent out in the newsletter along with the resources we discussed. I'll put the slides in there as well. And as I said, please do watch for the super quick questions when you leave that will tell us what you thought of today's session and what we could do better and differently. Okay, um, thank you everybody. Thank you, it's been so much fun today. Have a great rest of your week and wishing you health and happiness and time spent doing things that make your heart sing. Thank you everybody, bye. Thank you, thank you bye. so much. Great. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye, -bye. <laughs>